Thank you all for joining us. That was Bagels Over Berlin from filmmaker Alan Feinberg. And we are going to be joined in just a moment by Jerry Gersten, who you saw in the film, along with a brief discussion. Alan, thanks for giving us the opportunity to share your film today, which is especially meaningful on Veterans Day. Michael. Jerry, how do you feel today? I feel fine. How are you? <laughs> We're good. It, it, you really are amazing in the film. And I, I'm, I want to know at 97, what it's like for you to reflect back on your experiences during the war. I, I was a very lucky person. Uh, and I'm very thankful to still be around. We, we all are. Alan, um, we'll begin sorting through some of the questions that have come in from the audience. Um, one of the, the questions we're getting from a lot of folks is how can they see the film again and how can they learn more about this subject, which is of, of personal interest to a lot of people with family connections to this or, or interest otherwise. Um, how would you respond to their questions? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we have a website, which amazingly is bagelsoverberlin.com. So if you'll go to www.bagelsoverberlin.com, there is a little essay that I wrote. There's a trailer to the film and you can click a link um, and there's a charge for renting it or for purchasing it. And I invite you to do that. All revenue that comes from this project goes to my uh, passion, which is service dogs that we award to uh, veterans with PTSD. So I don't keep any of this money. But anyway, I think the rental is what, five, ten dollars or something like that. So go to bagelsoverberlin.com and you can see a trailer, you can see the film, and you can see some still shots and some videos that are not included in this film. Thank you, Alan. We're also getting a question about what happened to the, the German interrogator from Buffalo. Do you know the end of that story? Yes, back in the, the 1920s with hyperinflation in Germany, the family came to the United States and ended up in Buffalo where there's a large German and Polish population. And um, the father was a music teacher. In fact, Erwin's girlfriend took piano lessons from the father, coincidentally. Uh, in the late 1930s, as Germany was rising once again, the grandmother said, I'm going back home. And the grandson, who became the interrogator, said, I want to go with you because I want to experience Germany. But he was an American in every respect went to school there and spoke like an American and was an American. Anyway, he went to Germany, he got drafted and he became an interrogator because he spoke American English. Uh, six months later, he was killed. Uh, when Erwin came back to Buffalo, the first thing he did was look at what happened to the family. And he was told by the neighbors that when the war started, they left and no one knew what happened to them. Wow, thank you, Alan. Isn't that amazing coincidence? Yeah. It's almost, it, it's like out of a movie. <laughs> yes. Um, here's a question from Joanne. Jerry, I'll ask you first, and then Alan, you may have insight into this. Joanne asks, did you and the other Jewish airmen discuss the matter of bombing the railways to prevent transportation of Jews to the death camps? Is that something that you had any awareness of when you were in the Air Corps? Did, did you? I didn't get it. Can you repeat the question? Jerry, when you were in the Air Corps, what did you know about the Holocaust? And did you and the other airmen ever discuss bombing the camps or the railways? Yes, we did discuss destroying the, the camps, but uh, General Patton took care of that. That was his specialty. He he went to the camp and, and he picked out the... They, the prisoners picked out the bad guards, and the next thing you know, Patton took them behind the behind the scenes, and nobody saw them again. Hmm. Alan, one of the veterans in the film shares his reflections on this question. Was it something that the other men you interviewed spoke about? Well, they half apologetically said that uh, we knew nothing about um, what was happening. When he mentioned Auschwitz, that's Auschwitz, and they said, don't drop your bombs because you're going over slave labor. And as you noticed in the film, he said, so we knew nothing about what was happening. And as we all know, Roosevelt said the quickest way to save the Jews was to end the war. 
A lot of debate about that. Everybody has a different opinion, but that's what happened. Hmm. Jerry, someone in our audience is asking, what advice do you have for young people today? My advice to young people today is learn whatever you can. Oh, have an open mind and don't and don't 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 be afraid to learn and don't be afraid to ask questions. Alan, how about you from your experience? You've done a lot of things in, in your career, but but from your experience making this film, what advice comes to mind? Uh, well, I'd say, yes, having an open mind and study the past. You know, the old phrase, if you don't study the past, you're doomed to repeat it. And uh, I think there's no wars going on at present, presumably in, the, in this world, but you cannot ever tell what will happen in the future. And uh, I would say, watch out for China as well. I keep hearing American politicians saying we're the strongest country in the world. And I'm beginning to wonder, there may be conflict of some type in the future. And so we just must be uh, well-educated and open mind, just like Jerry said. Thank you. Uh, someone in our audience named Naomi is asking a little bit more about training. Jerry, how long were you in training? And what do you remember from that period? All I remember is that's all I was doing was training. <laughs> I was. Well, it looks like Jerry is frozen. Hopefully he'll come. He clicked mute. Sherry, if you can unmute your dad. Uh, yeah. There Thank Go ahead, Dad. Say that again. I, I learned a lot. I learned enough to handle. I handle every kind of machine gun, every kind of rifle, every kind of pistol. I handle all kinds of radio equipment. Not that I was capable. I am. I am completely. At, 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 I am the worst mechanic there is in the world. But I have a knack for sending Morse code. I was reaching a speed of twenty-five words a minute. And uh, it was very good for what we were in. I was even doing navigation with, in conjunction with the navigator. But they trained you, right, Daddy? You were trained to do this. Do you remember how long you were in training, Jerry, before you went to Europe? Do you remember how long you were in training before you went to Europe, Daddy? How long were you in radio school? Do you remember? Let's see. Went to Florida. I know about six months. I think five, six months. Hmm. Five or six months I was in training. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jerry. We have another question about the dog tags, which one of the veterans in the film mentioned. Did all Jewish men in the Air Corps wear those dog tags identifying you as Jewish? We were told that if we got shot down to ditch your dog tags, because if they caught you with the dog tags that, that said you were Jewish, they put you in a special concentration camp and you really suffered. So everybody, all the, everybody had to wear the dog Germans tags. The Germans were very rank conscious. So all, everybody that was flying, the, 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 the lowest rank was a, a buck sergeant. But everybody wore door tags, right, Daddy? Everybody wore door tags, except, except the Jews ditched them when they got shot down. Why were you sorted by religion in the first place? I, would you repeat that question? Yeah, why did your dog tags identify you based on religion? Do you know? So when you got killed, you got buried in the, according to the religion. Hmm. They buried you according to your religion. Wow. Jerry, there's another question from an audience member who's asking how your experiences in the war impacted your faith afterwards. Looks like Jerry's frozen again, but hopefully he'll be back with us in just a moment. Great, and Sherry has just muted again. Oh, no, sorry, go me. ahead, go ahead, Daddy. They didn't hear that. I had so many close calls where they substituted someone else for me, and they got killed. It happened so often that I swear this somebody looking after me. 
Hmm. Alan, was that a similar sentiment that you heard from many of the other men you interviewed? Yes, I remember one of the evenings that uh, we did here in Florida, they asked somebody, how do you feel? And he said, I know I would never do it again. <laughs> um, I never served myself. Um, I uh, it was a Vietnam War era and I was just lucky. Uh, and uh, that was not a war I would have wanted to participate in, but many men did. And I met so many of them today at Veterans Day at our, our event. Uh, and they just all are lucky. But as a result, they all volunteer. They all give back. That's their thanks for coming through it alive. We welcome Holocaust survivors to the museum all the time and people really react differently to their experiences. Some became really faithful after the war and some totally abandoned faith and feel that they had to reject it after they experienced. And of course, surviving the Holocaust is different from, from the experience of being in the Air Corps, but I imagine that there's that same kind of diversity of responses. Dan. Uh, Debbie is asking, she's commenting on Norman Lear's reflections on the Tuskegee Airmen, which really were remarkable. Uh, Alan, do you know if the Jewish Airmen ever connected personally with the Tuskegee Airmen and their national association? No, I do not. Uh, Norman Lear did. Um, that's fascinating. You know, I was coming home from, from work one day and I heard him on the radio on NPR and he, they were interviewing him because he was a bombardier. Mm -hmm. And I said, I've got to get him. So it wasn't easy. I don't know him. He's not a relative. And I just uh, constantly called and wrote and they finally uh, answered and said he would participate. Um, but I don't know of anybody else with any relationship there. But yes, it's interesting how he said I was devoted and he had all those programs featuring black actors. Yeah. I asked earlier a question about uh, learning more about this history, but there's a, a fair number of questions about researching this history, people who have parents or grandparents that were in the army and, and wanna learn more about what happened. Alan, can you offer any advice? What kinds of sources did you turn to when you were learning this history for the film? Well, primarily it was the men. And every time they mentioned an event or something, I just frankly, I uh, was gonna say go into the library, but I went to the internet, our new library, and I uh, did some research, but I used the words of the men. And I didn't fact check some of the things that they said, but I just feel that what they were talking about was true, was from the heart, it's what they remembered. And uh, that's what I went with. We'll also send a follow-up email tomorrow to everyone who's joining us today with some suggested resources for further exploration and learning. So hopefully those will be helpful to those of you. Yeah, put the website up there so they can go back and see the movie again if they'd like to. Of course. I notice this is being recorded. Can anybody replay this who's a participant today? Yes, we'll include a link to the recording of this discussion in our in our email tomorrow. So uh, please feel free to share that with family and friends and bagelsoverberlin.com where you can watch the film again. Uh, we're just about at the end of our 90 minutes together. So uh, Jerry, I wanna turn to you and ask if you have any closing comments on this Veterans Day. Thank you for for interviewing me, and I hope that I can impress to the other people that we Jews are human and that, that we are also a part of the human race, because I had a big job trying to convince the people that we were human. I, 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 I had to walk out and try to convince, I never saw such ignorance on the part of American people that knew so little about the Jews, and it was horrible. I was, a, I was a one man teacher, but thank God, Americans are quick to learn. Anything else, Daddy, you wanna say? And thank you for everything. Thank you for, for showing, helping showing the way and God bless you and God bless America. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jerry, for being with us and for sharing your story and insights. Alan, thank you for making this wonderful film and capturing the stories of these American Jewish airmen from the war. We are in your debt. Thank you. To our audience, we are grateful to all of you for joining us today. You can support the museum's work and join us for upcoming programs and events at the links in the Zoom chat and do stay posted for that email tomorrow. We wish everyone a wonderful rest of your Veterans Day. Stay safe and healthy. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Take care.